Hey, before we get rolling, I'd just quickly like to ask you, if I could, please like, please subscribe to the channel. If you have questions or comments, please leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to chat with you there. Jump on. I call this the $50 fill because I think just knowing it is worth like, you know, <laughs> 50 bucks. I like fills that are functional and I like fills that'll help me get out of a jam. And this does both. It works in straight eighth and also works in triplet and that's why I like it. So first let's just talk about the fill, then we'll talk about how to apply it, and then we'll talk about how to use it to get you out of a jam. It's all good. Very simply, this is the fill. Four E and a one. Goes around the drums. Four. I like it because it has a nice descending quality to it. If you're unfamiliar with the sticking or it seems weird, essentially you're just playing four all right, and then what you're going to do is orchestrate it around the drum. So the first thing you could do is move it from snare to floor. Four, e, and oh, totally works. And then get your left hand to the tom, which is often the trick. Four, e, and oh, That's it. Four, e, and oh, it's very easy to have a tendency to have your right hand go here. Don't let it do that. Put your left hand up. Four, e, and oh, one. Now, if you're playing a straight eight time from here, your hands are crossed this way. So in order to play the fill, you have to switch the left hand and get it up to the tom. In this position, in this position. And I think it's good just to practice this if you've never done this before. Okay, so that'll help you get the motion down for how the fill is going to start. I'll play two bars at a time, and then I'll play the $50 fill at the end of bar two. So if most of the time you've been playing just four E and a one, this is a nice way to get things moving around the drums. Like I said, it has a nice descending sound to it, is really sounds musical and breaks things up a little bit. I probably use it more than I should, but that's basically, so what? <laughs> it works, so I use it. I like things that work. The other way you can use this fill is in a triplet subdivision. So if you're playing either a jazz time or a shuffle rhythm, you can completely use it there. Um, where it's going to start is in a slightly different spot. So you're going to start on the last triplet of beat three. One, two, three. And then you'll orchestrate that around the kit. One, and two, and three. So I'll do the same thing two bars at a time, and I'll play that fill at the end of bar two. and Loop that a couple times so you can see how it gets used there. Sounds good. Totally works. <laughs> That's, I say that all the time, but I do. I like things that sound good and that totally work. Now you can connect both of these to notes in front of it. So you can make that like the ending of a fill or sometimes they'll call these kinds of things landing points. So to go back to straight eighth time, I could play 16th notes on beat three on the snare drum and have that roll right into the $50 fill starting on beat four. It sounds real nice and sort of has a smooth entry into the fill. So the fill will sound like this. One, two, three. One more time. One, two. When you get that left hand up to the tom, it really does a nice transition. So I'll put that in context of playing two bars at a time. One, two, three. You can do the same thing in a triplet subdivision. You could add just the extra two notes on beat three. One, two. 
do that again. One, two. Or you could play a full measure of snare drum and then play the $50 fill as beat four. I'll do that one more time. So you would play one, two, three. So I'll put that in context. The other way that I use the $50 fill, which in some cases I think is more important, is I talked about a landing point before. And I'll use this as a way to get out of a jam. I used to play with a guy that said, Josh, I'm really good at getting out of corners. So if he was playing and improvising and something was happening and he got himself jammed into a corner, he was really good at getting himself out. I think good improvisers do that because when you're just jamming with people and playing, you don't know what's going to happen. And you may wander down some musical pathway and think, uh-oh, I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to get out of this. So I use this as sort of a pull the ripcord kind of fill. And it's something that I know I can go to. It's a one beat thing. It'll get me back on the track. I can get out of it and get back. Now you kind of have to know where you are to be able to use it. But hopefully at least know that much. And if you don't, maybe that'll help get things back on track or you can realign or reset or whatever. So I'm going to jam just for a second and try to get myself put into a corner somewhere and then use this fill to kind of get out of it a couple different ways so you can see how I'm using it to get out of a jam. This is the other way to use it. All right. Okay, so that was maybe a little weird example. I was sort of forcing things to get sort of hung up so you could see how if I really kind of lost it, I can, I can get back into it. A couple of those were I knew I was going to get there and I used that to get out of it, hitting the symbol. And then a couple of them were I got myself into a jam where I knew I was almost getting hung up and then you can get out of it. So that's the thing. You can smooth your way through it or if you're really hung up, you're just like, bugger dig a boom. $50 fill, $50 fill, and you're out of there. So it works for straight eighth, and it also works in a shuffle or swing type setting as well. So let me try something like that, just to give you an example. One last little idea about using this concept in straight eighth anyway is you can loop it and play a fill. So you'll play it three times in a measure of four, four time, and it'll happen on one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a boom, and then you come out. So I'll show you how it works, and it is a nice little orchestrated idea that you can use sometime based off this concept of the kind of a three side of a clave, one E and at that tempo, it's pretty quick. We're going to go a little slower. But the beginning of each note will sound, it'll start on one, it'll start on the and a two, it starts on four. So it's one, two, three, four.
In context, it sounds something like this. Just another little idea that you can mess around with. These are by no means the only ways to use them, but what I like about this fill, the $50 fill, is that it's functional, you can use it in straight eighth, you can use it in swing, and most importantly, it can get you out of a jam. All right, check it out and have some fun with it. I think you'll find it really useful. I probably overuse it, but I do it because it works. I like things that work. All right, have fun with that.